As we take a moment to prepare ourselves for communion, I keep thinking, what do I want to share? And I kept thinking about how I'm, I'm appreciative of communion today because uh, life just knocks you out a lot, knocks the wind out of you. It's just been one of those weeks, one of those times where it's nice to be able to come and know and say, today I'm going to quiet myself listen to music, and be in the presence of God and each other to where we can come and meet God face to face to renew us and to fill us. And I kept thinking about the statement that Jesus made in the sixth chapter of John where he says, I am the bread of life. And Christ goes and he starts talking about all those I am statements. But I am the bread of life. And as we break bread, as we have communion, that is an important concept. And first, it goes all the way back to Moses. In the third chapter of Exodus, Moses asks God, it says, God, these people are going to want to know who is sending me. Who am I supposed to tell them? And if you remember that verse, God says, tell them I am who I am. Some translations say, tell him, tell them I am. And I've always loved that statement because it has always showed me or spoke to me to say that God leaves that blank and says, I am whoever you need me to be when you need me to be it. I am. I am the self-existent one. No one before me. No one equal to me. I always was and I always will be the Jehovah. Lord, I am. We have a God by our side that walks with us through the messiness of life to let us know that he, that God is with us, that we are not alone. And, and, and this is actually one of the ways that Jesus closed the seven I am statements by saying, I am the bread of life, the eternal life, the resurrection life, the satisfying life. I am the one that will help you have the indwelling of God if we just take a moment to settle ourselves and meet God where God meets us. And of course, we do this through communion. And I don't think it's a, it's a, a little you know, thing that Jesus just said, let's just do communion. It's important because as we know, when we eat food, we either eat or we die. There's no in between. We either eat or we starve. And when we're starving, it is killing us. So we eat to sustain us, to give us the energy we need. And I don't know about you, but I know there's certain days where your energy level goes really low and you're like, I don't think I can do it anymore. And then if you're like me, you realize, wait a minute, I forgot to eat all day, right? Which doesn't happen that often. But sometimes I'm busy and I forget to eat and I wonder why am I so drained? Where's my energy? Or whatever it is, and I hadn't had the food to fill me. And just like that, Jesus says, if you do not partake of this, if you do not partake of this life that God wants in the communion, you will die. Obviously, it will be a spiritual death, but we need God to sustain us, to lift us, and, let, and I I don't know how to tell people this over and over again. I do not know how people make it through life without faith and hope in God. So that when their life is kind of thrown for a loop, they can say, I don't know how this is going to work out, but I know I'm going to commune with God in the holy, and somehow God's going to renew me, sustain me, and give me the energy I need. So when I, when I deal with depression, which we've talked about, or, or you deal with some of that, the exhaustion and all of that, this is a great opportunity to come and say, Lord, here I am, and I am taxed out. I am, I am stressed, and I need you. Come and fill me. Come. Fill me with that strength and power to continue this journey. Always calls our attention to communion too. Always calls our attention to when Moses was leading the Israelites in the forest or in, 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 in the wilderness and in and, and the desert and all of that. And, and, and the manna comes down. And if you paid attention to that verse in Exodus and all of that, it says that, one, when God provided the manna, God provided manna, but they had to go out each day and do it. And it would rot and they couldn't have it anymore. So they had to do something. Every day they had to go out and meet God and collect that manna. 
Then God says that was sufficient for all of your needs. So they knew that that manna that was provided would meet their needs and they would be sustained to continue their journey in this wilderness. So they had sustained life. They realized that God was life-giving. So Christ is calling our attention to say, remember when God gave manna in the desert and God provided for you and sustained you and lifted you up? This is the exact same thing that I am doing here. My body, my blood, so that you can continue this journey and go through this life it's a powerful thing food I don't know about you but there's certain smells that if you smell brings you right back to your childhood right or comfort food you know like for me it's sauce so if there's mac sauce and bread in the oven my house I think there should be a candle that smells like sauce (laughs) somebody get on that all right But it brings back, right? It brings back emotions. You can smell something or or even music can do that. And and, and, and the other day I was talking to somebody about that because I said, oh, um, Amanda made sauce for dinner that night and all that. My house smelled good. And they said, this is what they said to me and I stopped talking to them. They said, yeah, I like when my house smells like sauerkraut. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We're not friends anymore. (laughs) I cannot equate sauerkraut and sauce, but to you, maybe, maybe. You know, you good German folks like that sauerkraut. But it means something. It brings back a memory. It connects you to something. Communion connects us to each other, but also connects us to God. And we do this on Worldwide Communion Sunday so that we can feel connected to other churches around this world that says, come, life is tough, but come to the table and eat and participate. Come, Let me fill you. So I encourage you. We're going to, Brett is going to play um, for about 12 or 15 minutes, and I'll encourage you, pray, come, come forward. This is a time for you to be renewed. I do not know how your weeks have been. I do not know how your months have been for some of you, but wherever you may find yourselves, come. Whether you are full or whether you are empty, I pray that you can come and meet the Lord and be renewed so that we continue this thing of life. So as the music starts, as you feel led, come.